It says, Nick has five different pairs of socks to last the working week, good for him. They're scattered loose in his drawer because, um, I don't know, he's, he's messy and disorganized, good for him. Each morning he gets up before light and chooses two socks at random, find the probability of that. Okay, so here's my question to you first. Um, was it one of those cases where you had some answers and you're like, doesn't match? Or were you like, oh, I don't even know where to begin with a question like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. So what I'm going to do is, um, even though it's like, oh, you know, we're in, we're in year 11 and 12, right? We should be beyond this, right? I actually think it is enormously helpful in concrete questions like this, like socks, right? I mean, I didn't bring socks with me, but to actually see what's going on. And I promise, actually, the numbers will become a lot easier to think about once you actually have these, right? So... Here are my, <laughs> because I don't have socks, um, I use dominoes, but here are my <clears throat> five pairs, okay? And they all, they all match, right? So he picks at random. Let's just take it one question at a time. So it says, find the probability that he wears a matching pair on the first morning, okay? All right, so here's us, we're Nick, right? We come to the drawer. It obviously doesn't look this neat. I mean, even if it did look that neat, I'm not looking, it's dark, right? So I pick a sock at random for my first sock, and I'm gonna pick two socks this morning, right? For the first sock, does it matter which color I choose? It doesn't, because it doesn't say like on the first morning does he have a matching pair that's red. It's just any of the pairs would be fine as long as it matches, right? So let's suppose we, by chance, we pick up a green sock, okay? So this one is in Nick's hand at the moment, okay? So now, remember, we, it didn't have to be the green one. It could have been any of the other ones, it's fine. So I could have picked any of the 10 for this. So in some ways, the probability of choosing this is actually 10 out of 10. Because you're like, ah, any of them is fine. Any of them is a favorable outcome, right? But then I've got to work out the second sock, right? Now, I want to know, firstly, how many options are left? Because that's the sample space. And you can see it. There are nine options left. How many of them are the one that will create a matching pair? And so there's only one that satisfies that. So in order to get that in there, the only favorable outcome left is one out of nine. And that's the answer, right? One times one out of nine, so that's all there is to it, okay? Now, where you really need to start thinking about this is, if you have a look at B and C, they feel like different questions, yeah? What's the probability on the last morning? What's the probability on the third morning, okay? Now, if you have a look at all those earlier questions that you were doing, and even questions like this, right? They lean you in the direction, and this is part of, the, it's part of the trick a little bit. They lean you in the direction of thinking, okay, if you want to know what's happening on the last morning, you've got to know what happened on all the previous mornings, right? Except that's kind of, they're actually trying to fool you a little bit. Because I want you to imagine this, right? It says, uh, let's do the part B. What's the probability that he wears a matching pair on the last morning? Do I care what happens on morning one, two, three, and four? I mean, according to this question, they're unimportant, right? So that means that in much the same way as for the very first sock on the first morning, like I don't care which sock that you picked, right? Um, all of those probabilities, they're just gonna multiply by 10 over 10 or nine over nine or eight over eight. They don't change your probability at all because they're just equal to one, right? So another way you can think about this, and I don't know if you snuck a look at the answer, right? But what you can do is you can say, well, you know how I said, oh, let's make this your first morning's socks, right? There's no reason why I can't say, for some reason, Nick decided to go and actually pick out all his socks for the whole week on that first morning. And he decided, you know what? This is gonna be the last morning's pair of socks. And he picked it out and this is what happened. These were the probabilities. So. Just because it's the first morning or the second morning or the third morning, if I don't care what happens for the other mornings, this is the same probability for him getting a matching pair on the last morning. And it's the same probability for him getting a matching pair on the third morning. Because imagine you and I walked in and we saw Nick pick out a pair of socks and we said, hey, don't wear that today, wear it on Wednesday. It's like. Okay, whatever. The, problem, the numbers haven't changed, have they? Like the socks haven't changed, all the calculations are identical. So actually, this is your answer for part A and for part B and for part C. That's it, one over nine. They're all the same, okay? Yeah. All right, part D though, 
this is where things do change, right? So this is the probability of matching socks um, for one morning. Yep, equals that. Okay. So now when I think about matching socks for two mornings, now can you see when I come back on Tuesday or Wednesday or whichever day, right? I actually do care what happened the previous morning. I need both of them to be true. So the way that I would actually write this out in my working years, it's the probability of, it's lunch one, right? Cool. It's the probability of one morning and then I'm going to use some of the notation that we'll use in the other question, if we, if we get to it, right? Um, I need to multiply by the probability of the second morning. And then, have you seen this vertical bar before in some of those? Do you know what it means? Do you know what the... Because I can tell you if you... Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so sometimes you'll see this, right? You'll see this notation. What it means is, what's the probability of A occurring if you know that B has occurred, right? So for example, I could say to you, um, it's, a, it's a wet, miserable day today, right? And I could say, what's the probability of rain today, right? Well, the probability of rain, if I pick a random day in the year, is different to if I say, what's the probability of, like, um, my family's from Malaysia, right? And there's a monsoon season, right? Now, during monsoon season, if I told you, um, Doris, it's monsoon season right now. What do you think is the chance it's going to be raining? You'd be like, it's 100% because it's monsoon season. It just rains nonstop every day for weeks, right? So that is the probability of rain, given that I know it's monsoon season, is different to just the probability of rain because there's times when it doesn't rain, right? So in this case, I want to say, what's the probability that I get the matching pair again if I know that I got it on the first morning? And then I have to multiply those two together because I want them both to happen. I want the first morning and I want the second morning, okay? Now we actually already know the first morning. It's one out of nine. That's what we just worked out, okay? Now I have to work out what happens the next day, okay? So here's the situation the next day. I know it looks like this because on the first morning I took out two identical socks, right? So now I'm gonna pick out, I guess you could say it's sock number three, yeah? Does it matter which one of these socks I pick? No, it doesn't. There are eight to choose from. Suppose I pick the blue one, right? So here it is, right? Now, because like you said, it doesn't matter which one, this is eight out of eight, right? Eight possibilities, but you could pick any of them, that's fine, right? But now I want it to match. So you have a look, how many socks are left? Well, you've actually answered both questions, right? One of them is the favorable outcome, and there are seven left over there, right? Only one of them is the blue one, yeah? So then the probability is a ninth times one times a seventh. It's just the nine and the seven. It's one out of 63. That's it. Do you see how I worked through that? Yeah. Okay. Now, um, I wonder if you're seeing for part E what the pattern is, right? So this is like first morning. This is, um, and I'm just going to highlight here, right? Because this 8 over 8 doesn't really matter. It's first morning, second morning, right? What would you guess happens on the third morning? Uh, times it by 1 out of 5. Yeah, and it's 1 out of 5 because, you know, here we are starting the third morning, right? And you're like, oh, I don't care. It's six out of six. So you pick the red one. And then there's five left and one of them's the good one, right? So if I wanted to say, where is my working going to go? Part E over here, right? The probability is going to be in the first instance, there's the first morning. There is the second one, which we just did, right? Here comes the third one. And then what would you guess the third morning is? Yep. Now, on the last morning, Presuming it's actually worked, right? So every morning I have successfully gotten a matching pair, right? Nick wakes up, he's already done four days where it's all matched. So what's gonna happen? What's the probability that he gets a match on the last day? It's just one. So therefore, that's my whole answer, whatever that happens to be, okay? Uh, and that partly answers the last question, part F. Find the probability that he wears a matching pair every morning, but one. So every morning he gets a matching pair, but on the last morning he doesn't. Now, just think about this for a second, right? There's day one, day two, day three, day four. 
and now I've gotten them matching every morning and then here are the final socks that I have left. Is it possible for me to not have a pair, matching pair on the last day? And the answer is no, because the only socks that are left match with each other, right? So my answer to part F would be, uh, it's impossible. The probability is zero. Does that make sense?